Okay, moving into differential equations, which maybe I'm weird, but I consider differential equations one of the easier things we do in calculus. Um, but I guess if you don't understand derivatives, then this is going to be really, really tough. Okay, so uh, what a differential equation is, is an equation that contains at least one of a function's derivatives. Uh, sometimes the function itself is also included. Um, I will sometimes refer to differential equations as diffiqs um, or a DE. I usually don't call it a DE, but I may write DE on occasion. Um, but differential equations, diffiqs, uh, these are a few examples of differential equations. They are equations because there is an equal sign. And notice every one of them has a derivative in it, y prime uh, plus y. In this case, that very first one, it actually has the derivative and the original function y. Um, they don't have to have y in it, though. Uh, number two has uh, y double prime minus y prime minus 6. Notice there is no y in that one. Um, and then we have dy dx equals x squared plus 7. That actually looks familiar. That's kind of some stuff we've done before. dy dx equals x squared over y. All of these are differential equations. And something else I meant to put in here, I'll just write it in here. There is something called an order of a differential equation. And the order is the highest derivative um, in the equation. The highest derivative in the differential equation, DE. Uh, so like this first one, uh, y prime plus y, that's a first order. Uh, y double prime minus y prime minus 6, that is a second order differential equation. Um, and the reason I'm showing you that, you really don't need to know it. And these are going to be mostly non-calculator questions. But there is some differential equation capabilities in our graphing calculators. And the syntax refers to the order of the differential equation. So uh, that's just to help you identify the order in case you do want to use a calculator to check your answers. Uh, so uh, a differential equation, just like an algebraic equation, the differential equation has a solution. Uh, and in this case, the solution is the function uh, such that when you plug the function and its derivatives in, the equation is satisfied. Uh, now, that's kind of wordy and hard to understand. So I have a couple of examples where I want to verify that the given function, in this case, y equals f of x cubed, is a solution to this differential equation. Um, well, if I'm going to plug it in, I know I can plug in 5x cubed for my y because they're equal to each other, right? y equals 5x cubed, so I'm going to substitute that in. But I also need to plug in something for y prime, so I'm going to go through the arduous task of the power rule. y prime is 15x squared, and then I could plug 15x squared in for y prime. And so I will take the derivative and I'll plug it in, and I'll plug the function in where it belongs. So we have x times, instead of y prime, I'll plug in 15x squared minus 3 times, and instead of y, I will plug in 5x cubed. And if this equation is a solution to the differential equation, then when I plug it in and simplify, I will get 0 equals 0. So let's see, x times 15x squared is 15x cubed, minus 3 times 5x cubed is 15x cubed, and that does give you 0 equals 0, which means that the equation, 5x cubed, is a solution to that differential equation. Um, now, most differential equations will have more than one possible solution. This just happens to be one of the solutions, and there's many solutions I could find to this differential equation. But this is just one of them, and it did work. Uh, let's try this one. y double prime minus y equals 0. I have my function y, and notice this one is very generic. It has some random constant in it, which we'll just kind of have to keep that plus c in while we're working this out. Uh, now, I do need the second derivative. Uh, keep in mind that if you have a constant, the constant, I can almost ignore it while I'm doing the derivative. So I'm going to keep the c on the outside, and I need the second derivative. So y prime is going to be c times and the derivative of e to the negative x is the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 1, times e to the negative x. Or you could just call that negative e to the negative x. Um, and y double prime, that's what I need to plug in. The c is still going to hang on out there, and it's negative. Uh, now when I multiply by the negative again, it's actually going to become positive 
e to the negative x. Um, now I guess if, if that's confusing, I can rewrite my derivative as negative c e to the negative x and then uh, ignore the negative c. So my second derivative, y double prime, would be negative c. And then in parentheses, the derivative of e to the negative x is negative 1 e to the negative x. And the two negatives here cancel out, leaving you with only c e to the negative x. So that's y double prime. So I'm going to plug this in for y double prime right here. So I have c e to the negative x minus my function y, which was given to us, c e to the negative x, and c e to the negative x minus c e to the negative x is 0. So that verifies that the solution y equals c e to the negative x, or the equation, does satisfy that differential equation. Uh, now there is something called an initial condition. And notice in this one up here, it was generic. Um, some books and some teachers will refer to this as a family of solutions, where there, your family could be any number in front of the e to the negative x. So one member of the family could be 4e to the negative x. Uh, another family could be 3e to the negative x. Another family could be 12e to the negative x, or member of the family. Uh, now what I've got here is I want you to find the particular solution, not the generic one, that satisfies this initial condition. And an initial condition, it does not have to be at zero. It just happens to be zero here. But initial condition is simply an ordered pair that allows you to solve for the constant in the solution. So if I know my equation has to go through the ordered pair 0, 3, then I could plug in, since we've already verified that the solution is c e to the negative x, I'll just plug in 3 equals c e to the negative 0, which is really just e to the 0, which means c is going to equal 3. So the particular solution with that initial condition would be y equals 3 e to the negative x. Um, and I know that c e to the negative x is a general solution because that's what we verified up here with number 2. Uh, so that is what a differential equation is, and those are what solutions are to differential equations. Uh, now, eventually, we're going to build up our repertoire and our, uh, our weapons here, and we'll be able to actually find the solutions to these equations on our own. Uh, but for now, I'm going to give you the proposed solution, and we're going to verify it. Uh, and eventually, we'll be able to just find the solutions on our own. Um, however, even once we do learn how to find solutions on our own, we will encounter some differential equations that are either impossible or very difficult to solve. Um, and in those cases, what we'll do a lot of times is instead of finding the equation for the solution, we'll, be, we'll sketch the graph of the solution. Uh, and you can sketch the graph without actually knowing what the equation is. And we use a tool called slope fields to do that. Um, slope fields... Uh, on the AP exam in recent years have been fairly common. Uh, I don't know why they love slope fields, uh, but they do. And you like slope fields too. Trust me, you're going to love them. They're tedious, monotonous, uh, annoying, but oh so easy. That sounded cheesy, didn't it? Hey, easy rhymes with cheesy. Mmm, cheese, I'm hungry. All right, so let's say we have this differential equation. And the techniques that we're going to learn to solve differential equations does not include how to solve this one. I do want to sketch the graph that goes through the ordered pair 0, 1. So all I know right now is that my solution, my graph, is going to go through that ordered pair. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an equation to be able to graph. I can't just generate an xy table. But I do have an equation that gives me the slope, y prime equals x plus y, this gives me slope. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah? So if I can find the slope of the curve, then I can kind of use that to guide me through the curve. So if I'm starting at 0, 1, and I know the slope of my curve is my x-coordinate plus my y-coordinate, then I know that right here my slope is going to be about 1. When I go through that ordered pair, since 0 plus 1 is 1, I know the slope is 1. Uh, and then we could continue on for a little while, and then we could recalculate the slope as our x and y coordinates change. Uh, now that's going to be kind of weird, and it depends on how long you want to carry out, and that's not really a great technique. So what we're going to do is generate what's called a slope field, and we are going to plug in a buttload of x, y ordered pairs, and we're going to use that to find my slope, x plus y. Um, I know I'm starting at 0, 1, right? 
So if I plug in 0, 1, 0 plus 1 is 1. So at the point 0, 1, my slope is 1. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a very small segment about like that with a slope of 1. It doesn't have to be exact, uh, just a small segment with slope 1. Uh, now, it doesn't need to be reasonable. If the slope is supposed to be 1, don't do this. That's very steep. Also, definitely don't do a negative slope. That wouldn't make any sense either. So, I'm going to sketch a slope of about 1 through that ordered pair. And then I'll pick a different dot. Uh, let's pick this one. That ordered pair right here is 1, 1. Well, let's see. If I plug in 1, 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So, when I'm going through this point, I need to have a slope of about 2. That's going to be a little bit steeper. Let's pick a different one. Let's try, I don't know, let's try 2, 1. If I go over to an x coordinate of 2 and a y coordinate of 1, x plus y is 3. So when I'm here at 2, 1, my slope is 3. So I'm going to sketch an even steeper slope. And then when I do go to the ordered pair 3, 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. So I have a slope of 4, which is going to be even steeper. And you can see how boring this is, because look at all these dots, and look at all these numbers I'm going to have to add. So... Uh, a lot of times you can find some trends. That was a slope of 3. If you notice this one, as I go from right to left, it was a slope of 4, a slope of 3, a slope of 2, a slope of 1. At negative 1, 1, when you add that, you get a slope of 0. If I do negative 2 plus 1, I get a slope of negative 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to sketch a small piece of the slope for every one of those dots. Now, to keep from completely boring you to death, I'm going to pause the video while I complete all of the rest of these slopes. Whew, that was exciting. All right, so this is what our slope field looks like, and that's why it's called a slope field, because it's a field of slopes. Yeah. Uh, you may hear of it called a direction field. All right, so this is our slope field, and while you're doing your slope field, uh, you will notice some patterns. And one of the patterns you may notice on this one is if you look down these little slopes right here. Like if we go down this little line right here, all the slopes following that line are 0. All of the slopes following this line are 1. All the slopes following this line are 2. And on occasion, you'll be able to pick up on some patterns like that, and it really speeds up the process. By the way, those things are called isoclines. Um, iso meaning same, cline meaning um, cline, like incline, slope, pitch, so on and so forth. Uh, so look for patterns when you're doing your slope field. Now the way we're going to sketch our solution, the way we will sketch our solution, go back to pin, I know my solution goes through the ordered pair 0, 1. And what I'm going to do is I'll let these little slope fields kind of guide us, and it's not going to be perfect. Some of y'all are going to, our answers may be slightly different, but they should resemble each other. Also, uh, you'll notice on some of these slopes, uh, the slopes get so steep, like I really can't remember, I think the slope here is negative 6, and that's actually looks kind of vertical, maybe I need to make that uh, there, I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to like pull out a ruler and measure all of these slopes when you're doing this, just as long as they're reasonable. And these are reasonable. So what I'll do is I'll start my ordered pair, 0, 1. And I know my slope is 1 right there. So my slope is 1. And then I'm looking at my slope field. And as I go to the right, my slopes are getting steeper. So my function, my function is increasing, but my slopes are also increasing. So I'm going to go to the right. And as I go to the right, I'm going to kind of have that bending up shape, which we lovingly and affectionately refer to as concave up. Uh, as I go to the left, as I leave my point and travel left, <clears throat> well, remember I had that little area of slope zeros, so I know I'm going to have to bottom out and have a slope of zero. And as I keep going to the left, I hit this interesting little thing right here. This is a unique isocline right here <clears throat> because they all have a slope of negative one, which is also the slope of that isocline, that actually creates like a little vertical asymptote, or not vertical, that creates a slant asymptote for this function. And as I carry to the left, what I'm going to do is approach that little slope of negative 1. Uh, so this is my solution through the ordered pair 0, 1. And I was able to sketch the solution without actually finding the equation of the solution. Um, so there you go. That is how we'll do this. I have one more example of a slope field. Um, y prime equals 2 minus x, and I want to start at 0, 0. So just like the last one, I'm going to um, 
find the slope at several x coordinates. And now this one does something kind of neat. Um, if y prime equals 2 minus x, like I'll just start over here on the left, my x coordinate right here is negative 3. 2 minus negative 3 is positive 5. So I'm going to have a very, very steep slope right here. Now if I move up, my x coordinate is still negative 3, and there's no y in the differential equation at all. There's no y's, which means as I move up and down, my slopes are all going to be the same. So all the slopes right here are going to be 5. My slope is only going to change when my x changes. So when I move to negative 2, okay, well now my x has changed. 2 minus negative 2 is positive 4. So now my slope's going to be 4. Now the difference between 5 and 4 on a slope field is going to be almost un indistinguishable. So I'm just looking for steep slopes. What's going to be more noticeable is when you get to slopes of like 1 and 0 and 2. Uh, those are the slopes that, uh, that we need to be a little bit more careful with. If I plug in negative 1, 2 minus negative 1 is 3. So my slope is going to be 3 through these points. So 3, 3, 3. As I change my y coordinate, it doesn't matter. x coordinate negative 1. 2 minus 0 is 2. So this is going to be a slope of 2. And now we're starting to get a less steep slope. So slope of 2s. Um, if my x coordinate is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0. So now I have a horizontal 0, 0, 0, 0, slopes of 0. And then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So now we have a negative slope. Negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. I didn't think I was going to actually do all of these in the reporting, but I kind of accidentally did. Holy cow, we're almost at 17 minutes. Goodness. All right. Uh, then I need to sketch the solution that satisfies the initial condition 0, 0. Okay, now this thing, um, as I move to the right, I start with a, a steep slope, and then it gets to a slope of 1, and then it levels off to a slope of 0. And then as I keep moving to the right, I start to decrease. So it's going to start going down. As I move to the left, my slopes are negative. But remember, they were steep or negative the further I got to the left. So it's going to negative and be concave down. And that's about what our solution is going to look like on this one. Um, <clears throat> and the reason I did this one is because some of y'all are insanely smart. It's almost scary. But if the derivative if y prime is 2 minus x, we can actually go back in time to our antiderivative days, which was a long time ago. That was like yesterday. Um, if that's the derivative, the antiderivative would be, antiderivative of 2 is 2x. The antiderivative of negative x is negative x squared over 2 plus some constant, right? right? Well, if you look at my solution, that is a parabola. <laughs> this has a B. Parabola that opens down, right? And that's exactly what I graphed when I sketched the solution. Um, now the plus C, that's some constant, that would be a vertical shift. So I could shift this parabola is high up. Whoa, it's in pieces. That was scary. Anyway, I could shift this parabola as far up or as far down as I want, and it would still follow the general slope field. So, uh, so there we go. There's a, a little introduction to differential equations and some an explanation of slope fields, and that's great.